Everybody, it's your boy, Daryl Clark. You know me as the captain. That's the captain. It's your boy, A-Train, Alex Allen. And we are here, our special guest tonight, JC the Barber, the man that gets me right. JC, let them know where they can find you at. You can find me at Truth Barber Studio, 398 South Washington, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And also, you can catch me on JC the Barber 614 on Instagram. Follow my man on the IG, and we'll have all of that it for you. It is social. It is social. That being said, this show is brought to you. This episode five is brought to you by uh, I Seventeen and Name, Name Three, Three Lifestyle. Lifestyle. We ain't sponsored, man. We do this ourselves. But if you guys are out there and you want to go ahead and sponsor us, or you got something, a product, a service, or something that you want us to present on our show, let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Without further ado, let's, let's go. go. Man, I've been there since like nine, nine stops. So probably like about twelve. I'm tired. <laughs> you wanna know if I'm tired or not? But, but Curry was playing though. How he let that happen? <laughs> he did his man. <laughs> <laughs> you know who wouldn't have let him let that happen? Who? Dane. Yeah. He alright. Uh huh. He alright. He alright. He alright. I mean, they ain't get mad props from me, but you know, he got maximum pressure, maximum pressure on him since he made that leap. Oh, <laughs> sorry, you laughed a little too hard, G. I said, tell him, come on down. <laughs> I ain't know what was going to happen. I got to leave that there for him. <laughs> he said, hold on, hold on, don't brush. <laughs> I hear him laughing. They trying to force Dak's hand, man. I just thought of something. Can you check the back on that? Absolutely. I got you. Yeah. It's a smirk about oh, it. Don't know. You, you. Appreciate you, big dog. And Daryl's just a straight run here. And he's got the corner. And more. 35 30. Oh, yeah. The 24 yard and the 5. Billy Williams in motion. Give me time. What's going on? It's your boy, Daryl Clark, also known as The Captain. And this your boy, A-Train. And I would like to welcome you to episode five of The Backfield. Now, of course, at The Backfield, we're giving you the real spiel, and our goal is to inspire, motivate, and inform. So make sure you stay tuned. So before we get started, make sure that all of our viewers and all of our listeners, I want to let you know that we appreciate everything you do. And if you haven't done that yet, make sure you start, take a chance to go and follow all of our socials. All of them. And don't forget to like, like share, share, and, and subscribe, subscribe to the Backfield Podcast. Okay. Shout out to little brother, Darnell, our producer, making everything happen. How you Let's doing? Let's go. Good, baby. How we feeling? Burr, 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 burr. Feeling good. Feeling good. Can That's I get that boy. sound quick for my dog? Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> one time. One time for me. Yes, sir. Every, yes, sir. Hey, every time we introduce the the producer Darnell, we need to hear that uh, one more time. Every yes, sir. Time. My man, love you, bro. Appreciate everything that you do. Listen, absolutely, we do. Real quick, it's been a while since we've been in our actual studio train. It's been a minute. We've been moving. Uh -huh. We've been shaking. Yeah, we've but been here shaking. we are yet again in an incredible, incredible establishment. We are in this establishment right here. First of all, if we can get the camera on my guy. Who keeps me real and keeps me fresh? Be nice, whatever. This right here is J.C. the Barber. He's the owner of Lighthouse Barber and Beauty Salon, the Truth Barber Studio, and last but not least, the, the Upper, upper Room. room. <laughs> <laughs> he has over five hundred five star ratings on his uh, services at a perfect five star. I've never seen that before. Never seen that before. I've wow. seen 4.9, 4.7, 4.8, but never a five-star rating with over 500 people and you know, rating this man. He's also father of six, grandfather of three. He's mm. been married for 23 years, native to 
uh, Columbus, Ohio, the six one four. Oh, yes, sir. Jeremy, okay. my guy. How you feeling today? I'm good, my brother. You great. I'm great. My, listen, he's one of the hardest working guys I know. And I'll tell you a real quick story of how I come to know Jeremy. Uh, so when I first moved out here, uh, my hair was down my back. And for a job, I had to cut my hair. And so um, my boy, actually from the yo, shout out to K-Wiz, he got me right. You know, I, and I trusted him. He was the only guy that would touch my hair, would line me up and everything. And so when I came here, um, I was standing with my cousin somewhere on the south side. And I went to a barber, and I felt like he just pushed my whole hairline back. Still and, it's, you know, I'm, I'm walking around with a hat, and I don't even wear hats. But uh, so after that, you know, I, I met one of my guys at the gym, and he was like, hey, man, you got to go see my barber. And I'm like, man, I ain't going to nobody else, bro. I'm going to do my own joint. You know what I mean? He said, bro, I'm telling you. Then I looked at his head when he finally took off his, his wave cap. I said, oh, yeah, he got you right. Yeah. So I took a chance, went up to the lighthouse. Uh, Jeremy got me right, and for ever since then, the last what five five years at least, at least five at years, least. he's been getting been me right. With me. And uh, so yeah, I appreciate. That's how I come to know my boy Jeremy. And uh, yeah, my guy, appreciate you. Yes, sir. That's pretty dope, man. That's pretty dope. And uh, also, he, right before we got started, he got me right too. Laced. He got me laced up, ready to roll. You know what I mean. I'm feeling good. Beard is called clean. My lineup is straight. I got tapered up in the back. I'm yeah. ready to roll. But, yes. you know, first and foremost, before we actually get started, you know, Train has a lot of connections. And because of that, I've been able to meet a lot of people that I may have never come across before, including yourself. So I do want to thank you for being on the show. For one, it's very nice to meet you. And uh, thank you for allowing us uh, to take some of your time, man. It's been an honor. Absolutely. For sure, man. For Pleasure. sure. Pleasure to have you guys here. For yeah. sure. It's a lot, thank man. You. So, of course... You know, we're some sports guys. Let's go ahead and get it cracking, man. Get it cracking. We're going, I'm going to ask my first question right out the bat, you know. Who's your favorite football team in the league, in the NFL? Them Cowboys. Oh, them my Cowboys. God. All right. All right. We All right. them boys. Uh, are y'all? We them boys. Now you <laughs> So you know I'm a fan for real. For sure. If I, I can still fan. say we them boys after this disappointing season that's a hundred so. yeah it's been a lot of disappointing seasons oh, man yet and man. still so have you always been a dallas cowboy fan always okay so let me let me ask you i'm a quarterback so i gotta ask you what your take is on dak prescott <laughs> <laughs> Dang. i'm gonna put it like this i've been on the fence you know a couple of years but this year i gotta give it to him man yeah. he had a great Season. I thought so. Mm -hmm. He had a great season. Best season he's had since he's been a, our quarterback. Yeah, I think and so. So, yeah. is he our future? Time will tell. I know they owe him a lot of money, you know, so. A lot. Right. They owe him a lot of money. He got a new image, got his hair cut, got back to the uh, the goatee. Yeah. Kind of look like Jalen Hurts a little bit, but it's all good. <laughs> Maybe that's, a, you know, that's a new style. Maybe he feel like that'll bring them some luck this year. Like, what, happened, yeah. what happened when they played Green Bay in the playoffs, man? At the crib, by the way. Man. You know y'all was favored for that. Favorite. Mm -hmm. You know, we hadn't been in this position in a long time. Yeah. As far as number two seed. For sure. You know, playing at the house until we possibly would play the Niners. Right. You couldn't write it no better right now. You know, and so. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd Dak play that game? I think Dak still did all right. Mm -hmm. He did all right. Our defense, you know, let us down. You know, yeah. they did that a couple of times this year when we really needed them. They owe Dak a lot of money. They owe Dak a lot of money. Is he the future? Or do you think before they continue to pay that man, they're going to end up doing some trading or cut releasing him? What do man, you think? that's hard to say. You know, he fits the Dallas mode. He plays the part. It's going to be hard. If you moved away from him right now, we're going to go Trey Lance. D.C. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm ready. Hey, you ready? I'm ready. You ain't got no running back right now either, do y'all? No. Train, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> hey, package deal. <laughs> we got Donald. And, uh... <laughs> hey. hey. I'm, Hold I'm, on, wait. You got who? Donald. Who is that? The running back. Hey, Deuce Vaughn. Oh, yeah, yeah. I go out there and get some, yeah, so, get some right. They need some running backs. We need mm -hmm. linebackers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but they got a lot of money to dish out. And that's, yeah. I think that's the situation yeah. now. 
We'll see. If they if they gave a Super Bowl type of trophy out for a regular season performance, y'all, y'all would have all of them. <laughs> y'all would have all of them straight up. And then, you know, first round of playoffs, easy out. Then you, they got Stephen A. back on first take oh, laughing man. at y'all. Again. I was just going there. <laughs> I was just going there, Stephen A. And, you know, and rightly so. You know, everybody deserved to give us the business after that because even the haters yep. thought that we would do better than we did. For sure. I even thought This so. year. Yeah, I even thought so. And I'm not you a know, cowboy fan. So. But I'm like, man. Yeah. Mo- moving on from, uh, you know, last year and the season that y'all had, right now is the big time free agency. What are you guys doing in free agency that you like or dislike? They ain't doing too much. I swear I thought. Yeah, they know, haven't made much noise just yet. What would you like to see? I would have liked to see them make moves on some of the running backs yep. that got passed up, whether mm-hmm. it been Saquon. Derek, they had the you money. Know what I'm saying Aaron Jones. Yep. You see what he did to us last year. He, I mean, he did an open interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they should have, you know, and the kind of money these guys got, not maybe Saquon, but they probably could have afforded Derek Henry mm-hmm. and, and possibly definitely Aaron Jones. He got yeah. one year, seven million. Yeah. We could at least did that. You wow. know, fill the fill the holes, you know what I'm saying, while yeah. you can't. Yeah. And so that's my thought on that. So. Yeah, y'all ain't do nothing. <laughs> y'all ain't do nothing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's very interesting that he mentioned a couple of guys that I was actually going to bring up because of the free agency. Aaron Jones, Saquon Barkley. It's been very surprising and yet very interesting on what's been going on with the free agency thus far because a lot of those guys mm-hmm. are getting signed to – New teams, but those new teams are in their divisions from the teams that they previously played Patrick with. Queen. You know, you mentioned Aaron Jones. I, me personally, I'm glad Absolutely. that he went from Green Bay to my Vikings. Yeah, you know, we just let we just let go Alexander Madison and Aaron Jones would be a great fit. Saquon Barkley, New York Giants. Now he's a Philadelphia Eagle. You know what I mean? Who else did I miss? Train Patrick. Who else? Patrick Queen, top dog linebacker with the Baltimore Ravens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a stiller now, AFC North. Yeah, you know, I mean, you've seen it happen in times past, but maybe not as much as you've seen this uh, uh, this offseason. It's been very interesting thus far. We haven't even got to the draft yet, so it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's kind of crazy it when is. you think about it, man. Who's <laughs> your, uh, you know, who, who's your out of the three we just mentioned? Which one shocked you the most? I would have to say Saquon to the Eagles. Saquon to yep. the Eagles. Yep. That was sure. That was my pick. Too. The only would have been more shocking if it was Saquon to the Cowboys. Oh. Yeah, that'd have been dumb. <laughs> like, like no, dumb in a good way. Like, like, yeah, that'd have been dumb. Like it, we way better, I mean, we'll say way better than Pollard, you know, but obviously he's the the, the better choice. Because you have to ask who hates us more. Uh the Giants. You know, uh, do they hate us more than they hate Philly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, either way, you know, I'm sure Eagles fans, my son-in-law's an Eagles fan, and I know he loving it. We ain't had a chance to talk about it yet, but, man. Shout to Saquon, Penn State (laughs) alumni. True. My guy, my guy. To represent. Tiki Barber said. (laughs) (laughs) Hey. He said, Saquon, you're (laughs) dead to me. <laughs> Saquon, like, right. Saquon went at his neck though. He, he, what, what was, was, his was his response? He told him he always been a hater and a few other things he said. But then he said, "Don't when you see me, don't be smiling in my face." That's Ooh. real. Yeah, I ain't know that. Yeah. He's talking about you know, yeah, you know a lot about loyalty to teams and this and that. And you know, I think you got to give it up to Saquon. He did everything. Yeah, he did to try to stay there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He did everything right. And they played him. So they, yep. And Philly stepped up. I think my biggest one, I love it. You know, you guys share the same one. I was surprised to see us actually go for Patrick Queen. Yeah. Because for one, as a Steelers fan, when we go and get guys, we get guys who have been released that were so so, you know, Mouse Jack, for example, uh, the guy Holcomb from the um uh, commanders the previous year, and who was the other guy? Uh Quan Alexander. 
they were decent guys, but they weren't like Patrick Queen. Like that's he a star. Yeah. You know, so I was surprised but happy at the same time. But they got him to be able to tackle Derrick Henry twice a year. Man. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. Derrick Henry is a Raven now. I yeah. forgot about Air that. Raven. That's crazy. Yeah, Raven. That, that, that is uh, going to be some exciting football to watch for sure. And JC, I, I, is, there's more free agency going around. What is your take on everything else? Any if, of Anything. You know, guys signing bigger deals or, you know, guys not being signed or wanting trades. What, do you, what are you thinking about stuff? You know, we got to talk about Justin. Yeah. You know, I just think, you know, with, with him – not going anywhere. I mean, nobody wanted to look at him. You know, is there something going on behind the scenes, mm-hmm. or That's a good point, or or what? You Talking know, about Justin Jefferson. No, 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 no. Fields. Justin Fields. Oh, Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know why hasn't he? You can't tell me none of these teams. You know, somebody took Sam Darnold. Oh, my Vikings. Uh, over. Yeah. yeah. Justin Fields. Well, they don't. Maybe they don't want to trade him. I mean, he's still in contract. He yeah. wasn't released. Maybe they want to keep him. They may. How, how's that look? How's that look? I get what you're saying. Both of those in the quarterback room. You was a quarterback. Yep. You know yep. how would that? How would that look to you? You're saying if Justin Fields stays with Chicago and they and draft they Caleb Williams? Yeah. Oh my gosh! I mean, <laughs> tension right out the bat, and second, especially with Justin Fields knowing that. Caleb Williams is high on their radar. And yeah. Then the Bears obviously have the first pick, and everybody and who's everyone, you know, has a hunch that uh, Chicago is going to pick him, you know. So if I was Justin Fields, obviously I feel some different type of way. If you're getting picked that high, number one overall, you're expected to be the franchise guy. Mm-hmm. And that's where they had Justin Fields come in to be, you know, when he was drafted. So I, I feel like he's got a bad rep. I think if they don't draft him, obviously, I'm sorry, if they don't draft Caleb Williams and Justin stays at Chicago, they just have to do a really good job of building around him and giving him a solid chance. It's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to watch him play and and see what type of talents and what he can bring to the table when every other play is on his back when he drops back to Ch- pass, you know. So Chicago's just never been a good place to be a quarterback. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I listen, uh, a little birdie told me in the ear what they thought. They thought that they would trade down, yep. draft Marvin Harrison Jr. That's a good look, too. And because uh, a fact checker, my, my, my man DC, Darnell, does the Bears have two first round draft picks or do they have one? You can get back to me when you, when you, when you, when you find the answer. But if they have two first round draft That's picks, good. it does not. Sound far fetched for them to trade down, give commanders the first pick, let them pick Caleb Williams, unless they're so sold. Who's the quarterback for uh, uh, the commanders right now from uh, uh, UNC? Can't remember his name. How? Yeah, How. How. Yes, How. Sam How. Unless Sam they're Howell. sold on him, but then they can go and get Caleb Williams, draft Marvin, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., and then that's an instant weapon. Right you know, up the bat. Right up the bat. But it can bite them in the butt if they decide to draft. Or switch that and then the commanders draft that dude. Yeah, because, you know, then the commander have the number two pick? Yes, that's mm-hmm. what I mean. He switched the picks. Yep. Yeah. And, and train to answer your question, they got number one overall. That was from uh, Carolina. Okay. And then they have number nine overall. So, yeah, there you go. Appreciate that, little brother. Thank, Thank you. Thanks appreciate for that nugget, man. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, sir. There it is. Um, so, I mean, that's always a possibility, too. Yep. Yeah, but like DC, what do you think about you know the free agency that you guys are doing? How do you think about? You know? I, I like some of the moves. I hate some of the moves. Um, I was a little indifferent about us losing Kirk Cousins. I was a fan of his. You know, he's down. You know, he's with the Atlanta Falcons now. Congratulations, good luck. You're in the uh, you're in the NFC South now. Cool. Um, got that big that big paper. Um, big paper. They brought in Sam Darnold. Um, I'm a little indifferent about that, but, you know, sources and reading, they like Sam Darnold based off of, uh, uh, you know, the philosophy of the offense. He's pretty familiar with uh, what they want to do offensively, and that's who they have in as of right now. So time will tell exactly how that is going to work out. I hate that we lost Daniel Hunter to the Texans. Um, you know, we, we needed him as a rush in, you know, specialty guy. He's made yeah. a lot of plays for it. Yeah, but he's gone. 
you know, you know, hopefully we uh, game plan on fixing, you know, fixing and filling that spot. I, I do have her, as I said, mentioned earlier, Aaron, Aaron Jones from mm -hmm. Green Bay. I think he will be a hell of a weapon for us offensively. And then um, Harrison Smith, we signed him again on defense. You know, he's our veteran safety. He's about 40. <laughs> we need that leadership. He ain't that old. Man. I'm just saying he's up there. <laughs> he's up there. You know, we, we, we you know we need leadership out there. I know he's still able to uh, make some things shake as far as coverage, as far as coming down and filling the gaps when it comes to uh, being an alley defender. For sure. Um, you know, and – we have about eight picks in the draft. Eight, uh, yeah, we got eight, eight picks. Dang. Eight picks. Um, our first round, our first round pick is, uh, I think we're eleventh. You know, but uh, since we brought in um, Sam Darnold, I'm not really sure if they'll still try to go after Drake Drake May out of Sam, North Carolina. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, <laughs> we'll see though. We'll see though. I mean, it's still very early, and like I said, the draft hadn't even got here yet. How about you and the Steelers, brother? You know what I'm. Uh... 75 25. So, and then you and I talked about it multiple times when it came to Russell Wilson. Um, obviously, we got him for a bargain, you know, 1.2 million, I think, something like that. The Broncos got to pay the rest for the next two years. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. No, you good. I just got to take my breath, take my time with this, take a deep breath. For sure, bro. I, I, I wouldn't like it, and I'm a Marshawn Lynch fan. I wouldn't like it if. I had to go through somebody to get to my quarterback. You know what I mean? You my quarterback, right? And then let's say JC's the the assistant to you. I'm trying to get to you directly, JC. Like, hey, yeah, I'm I'm gonna get, I'm gonna hit him up, right? And I gotta wait for a call back. And we teammates. And we teammates. That's wild. Yeah. So when they said that Russ was going to go in and talk with the Steelers, I said, great, go talk with him. So I'm thinking that, that talk went well, and Tomlin set him straight. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, man, we we not doing this childish stuff, man. If we need to get in touch with you, if your teammates need to get in touch with you, this is what it needs to be, direct line of communication. None of that BS, you know. So uh, if he comes in with that diva mentality, I don't want it. But if he comes in straight, ready to play, ready to help, ready to be that veteran presence for uh, Kenny Pickett, uh, then great. You know, now that being said – I'm Still talking about the quarterback room, mm -hmm. $1.5 million mm -hmm. to him. That's nothing, whatever, right. to any NFL team. Pickett is still on a rookie contract. If the Bears still want to do something with Justin Fields, it wouldn't be out of the picture for us to still kind of go after him. Think about that. To have three quarterbacks in there to compete. And then after one year, you get rid of who you don't need. You know what I mean? And then you got your backups because – Justin Fields still under his rookie contract, mm -hmm. as is Kenny Pickett, mm -hmm. and you're paying $1.5 million right. to Russ. So if we get an opportunity to trade a second-round pick for Justin Fields, I say do it. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a fan of Fields, just like you guys said. Now, moving on from the quarterbacks, I know Le'Veon Bell still wants to play running back. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Le'Veon. Keep hey, boxing, listen. dog. <laughs> no, no, no. Last time he got knocked out. I don't think he want to keep doing that. <laughs> but our receivers now. We got rid of um, – who was our veteran we had? Um, I'm drawing a blank. Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. No, 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 no. Robinson. Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. We got rid of him. State. Yep. And then we dra or we traded Deontay Johnson to the Panthers for a cornerback named – was it Deontay J Jackson? I'm not too familiar with Deontay Jackson. Right. You know what I mean? And for us to give up Deontay Johnson, I'm like, yo, yeah, he missed five games from injury, but – we better draft early. You know, we do a great job drafting receivers, but I, I just wasn't sold on that one. So that's that why I'm 75, 25%, man. I, I'm, no, I'm not sure what we did. You know, I don't know what the heck was going on with that. Um, yeah. But I do love the Patrick Queen pickup, like we talked about yeah, that's, earlier. That's major, man. That's huge. That's major. We had uh, our middle linebackers last year, all of them went down hurt, except for Elendon. Um, and he and he held it down as best he could, but he was still, you know, played with some injuries. So I think we're doing decent right now. Um, Omar Khan, I'm sure he's going to do some great things still. Uh, but that's my take on our free agency. I want to double back to Russ real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, it's he's crazy because I'm about to ask you what you thought about Bruh. Russ. But by all means, <laughs> have at it, my guy. <laughs> you know, Go ahead, Jay. I just had this conversation with somebody earlier about okay. the same thing with Mar you know, Marshawn Lynch. You know, 
did we hear any about anything about that? The same stuff that they were talking about. Did we hear that from anybody from Denver? He couldn't get along with his coach. That's a totally different situation. Right. He had his mindset when he got there that he wasn't. He knew before he got there that Russ wasn't going to be his guy. I thought he so. wants somebody he can take and mold and right. You know, and so uh, I just felt mm-hmm. like Russ did kind of get a a bad rap. And it's, it's those little things like that, that when you're not playing the best, those things seem to amplify. They like right. just want to get rid of you then. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I really think, you know, like you said, Tomlin, he knows how to treat his players. Indeed. You know, Tomlin would have never, he know, how to, he know how to get you in line, but he would have never did it the way Peyton did. Right, right, right. You know, and uh, so I looked at it like that. But Russ handled it like a professional. That's why he could. No, he handled it because you know he let his I'm assistant saying? do it. <laughs> <laughs> that man, that man does not like that assistant thing. Yeah, and I, I get but it. But no, I, I agree. He handled it professionally. He didn't lash out to the social media like some people would do. And, right. I, and I think in the end, you know what I'm saying, I – Man, y'all gonna have me rooting for y'all unless y'all play us, cause I wanna I wanna see Russ, you know, get his groove back. Cool. He yeah. still he still can chuck that rock as long as y'all got somebody that can go get it. Cool. That'll make our haircuts and conversation a lot more easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nice, sure. man. It's uh, yeah, it's been a a shakeup. It has been a big big time shakeup. Off season, free agency, draft coming. Yeah, still more people to be signed, traded, the whole bit. It's definitely been a shakeup. Speaking of shakeup, I'm sorry. Every, every, here we go. Speaking of shakeup, are you both familiar with what happened in the SEC Women's Championship game? Absolutely. Talking about that bro? Oh yeah, shakeup. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, so for those who are watching that may not know about it, and you can go and research it. I got um, during the SEC Women's game, and you know, help me with these names because they. <laughs> they cultured. Uh, Malaysia Fuwali stole a ball from Flaje Johnson, mm-hmm. um, LSU. And Flaje Johnson being frustrated, you know, she committed a foul. You know, and as she committed that foul, you know, um, Fuwali, she went back. She didn't stop or nothing after the foul. Her coach, uh, you know, smacked her on the butt, tell her, good job. You know, it's a foul um, coming back. And then South Carolina's um, Ashlyn Watkins mm-hmm. – Walked in front of Johnson in her face, you know, talking, talking that cash, talking that cash, as would any of us would do when we're frustrated as a competitor. You kind of, you know, man, get out of my face, right. get, out, get out of my face. So along comes, let me get this name right. South Carolina's um, was six foot seven, Camila Cordoza, mm-hmm. who's Brazilian, ran up on Johnson and put her down. Yeah, put her down. Put six foot ass. seven, pushing down a five foot ten girl. And just stood there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a deep tackle. Oh, like, my God. Like, just <laughs> boom. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. For sure. So, so wow. uh, out of that, there was a total of six players who got ejected by uh, the head ref, uh, Puliana Spurlock-Walsh. She, you know, ten of them, or six of them gone. Two from LSU, Janae Kent, Aaliyah Del Rosario uh, for leaving the bench. And then from South Carolina, there were four. Obviously, Cordosa. Uh, for fighting, and she will not be able to play in the first round mm. of the women's NCAA tournament. That's huge. That's really you know what I mean? That, that, that's huge. And then they had Tessa Johnson, Chloe Kitts, um, and uh, Kamaya Walker for all leaving the bench. So was it worth it? You know what I mean? Was it worth it? And, and we're going to touch on it here in a second. Angela, just to take it back, Angela Reese and Cordosa – have been going at it the whole game. The whole game. And I don't know if you, I'm talking about, you know, Angela Reese. She's culture. Yeah. She was talking mad cash. Like, this is all day. All, all day. effing day. Like, you can read the lips. Like, she, she's saying that. She can ball. And she can ball. <laughs> and she also got away with pulling and yanking that Cordosa's hair. Mm-hmm. It was blatant. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody saw it. I mean, they zoomed in. They talked about it. There was nothing called. So there had to be some frustrations built up from the Brazilian. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and I know all about the Brazilian girls. But anyways, that's another story. (laughs) 
So, uh, but no, all jokes aside. So she must have been frustrated, you know. Uh, going back to Angela Reese talking, you know, you know, cash to her as a Brazilian girl. Yeah, she know a little English, so all she could do is smile. She can't talk smack talk back, back to her in right. English. You know what I mean? What's right. she gonna say? So Angela probably feel like, oh, she ain't saying nothing. She's scared. Ain't yeah. nothing she can say. You know what I mean? Because she's not responding back. She's just smiling. But okay, let something else pop off. Mm-hmm. Boom! Put that girl to the ground. And where was Reese? Nowhere to be found. Not saying she was scared. If you out there, if you watched this, I'm not saying you were scared. You did the best thing by walking away because now y'all can play in, you know, right. in the, in the, yeah, in the next smart. series. So good move. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, bro. Um, what's it worth? I mean, I know, a ten, I know tempers fly. You know, you get so amped up in the game. You're going back and forth. There's this, there's that. And, you know, when in the heat of the battle, once something starts to set off, you know, you got to make a decision. Is it worth jumping in there? Obviously, a few of them made the decision to get get crazy with it. And then there are some that walked away from it. And those girls will be able to play. And then the other ones that, you know, react, you know, reacted in the way that they shouldn't have yeah. are missing time. And in the end game, it's it's pivotal because that can make or break their season depending on, Absolutely. I mean, based on those players that, you know, that were suspended. And real quick, Jeremy, I'm going to let you go, JC. Yep. But I think South Carolina mm -hmm. is going to – Start that game with one sub, mm -hmm. and then LSU is just playing with five girls. Mm. Wow, that's yeah, so they're gonna be tired. Yeah, for sure. JC, what's your thoughts on that old brawl? I mean, I'm in agreement with both you guys. It's it was never worth it, and I'm sure you know in the heat of the moment, everybody has had one of those in the heat of the moments, <laughs> but it's always come back to bite you. Yeah, and so you know, if you're willing to pay the cost. Yeah, and it, it's, it's never worth it, you know. Anger, is, you know, the, you know, the fruit of anger, mm -hmm. you know, is always going to, you know, be worse than you bargained for. So that's real. That is that's real. real. Quick question, real quick, real quick. Brother of Flage Johnson, oh, Trey Brown oh, Milk, come flying out of the stands. He used to run hurdles, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Ready to wreck shop, you Bro. know, and, you know, in, in, in his sister's honor. Are you are you coming down there and reacting like that, like he did? If your if your sister was in some trouble, so I didn't have sisters. I had right. six brothers. Okay, but I got daughters. There you go. So before you go to the daughter part, Man. use the you, brother if it was your brother you and your young age. Right up under you good. Uh, was that a strap? <laughs> was it just... Nah. <laughs> yeah? No, it was your phone. Oh. I'm like, hold on, guys. What, what you got is that? So, yeah, I know you're going to edit that part. <laughs> but it, everything <laughs> saves. And it, Go ahead. And anyway, man, I don't know. You know, <laughs> look, looking at what happened, because, you know, when you can, you can see... Uh, that there's nothing good gonna come out. It's easy to say no. I'm gonna just fall back. Right. But everybody, you know, I've been in situations growing up with my brothers that you know, boom, I just I, I jump in a situation and I had to deal with the consequences. So, <laughs> bro, put I'm the, sorry, man. No, put it on. <laughs> I'm sorry, cause listen, listen, I'm sorry. I'm a, let you get back to it, but bro, listen. listen. I really thought it was, but I didn't. But at the same time, I feel it. I got the too, bro. So I'm just like, it can't be. It this, be. this why it's so it funny to me. Be. This why it's so funny to me, and I'm in tears. Cause he was like, "Well, if it was your brothers, would you have run down there?" And then I said, "You know, don't you let." <laughs> Like that, hey, so, okay, you getting to it. <laughs> so that's why I'm laughing so hard. I apologize, man. My mind nah, went there, but you. I'm like, it ain't, but go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I didn't mess the whole segment. That nah, part man. Of that. Hey, that's part of the show, big dog. <laughs> we just had a moment. It's cool. Man. <laughs> but I'm with I you, man. you said, Jesse. Yeah, you have to work. That's way louder than the phone, man. Yeah, it was yeah. like, oh, uh, shoot, me too. I'm so, anyways, can you repeat what you said, Ross? No, I was just saying, you know, it's been situations, you know, growing up where, you know, you had to jump in on some stuff with your brothers. You right. know what I'm saying? And so, you know, everybody, I think, in an roundabout way, you taught to be ride or die for your family. So, you know, Naturally. I, feel a, I feel a brother, but at the same time, 
he wasn't even considering the consequences when he did it. He just reacted. Right. Mm-mm. And so mm-hmm. back to what I was saying, those kind of knee jerk reactions, you know, are never going to produce what you you thought it would be. Right. You know what I'm saying? Thank God he didn't jump down there and do something. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? It'd been the whole. They said he got arrested, but then I heard he didn't get arrested. You know, so hopefully nothing comes out of so it. So last I heard was, what was his name again? Trayvon. Trayvon Milton. Tra- Trayvon Mil- Milton. He was arrested for battery and assault uh, and released on uh, like a thousand, thousand plus dollars on bond. Um, will it stick? Who knows? You know, that all, all that stuff. Heat of the moment. Um, obviously, the... Um, the, the 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 teams could have a say so like hey this that was my brother sister whatever um but i think it was a lady who won the press charges because he pushed her down and stepped on her shoulder to get to the floor but there were also like two other guys trying to get on the floor but the uh, police did a good job stopping them so that was the last i've heard um hopefully they just wipe all wipe it all clean oh he leaped over oh yeah <laughs> you said he did hurdles <laughs> so you, you said something jc you said there were times when you were growing up and you had to kind of just jump in. You know what I mean? Have you been into a lot of fights when no, you were growing up? No, I wasn't a I wasn't a fighter like that, man. Uh but I do remember, you know, a situation where it wasn't it wasn't me uh as far as uh the one that jumped in, it was one of my brothers that actually jumped in for me mm-hmm. when we were in school together. No, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know how it is. You, you know, you just, you ride, you know? Right, right. And so uh, a guy did steal on me, though, but he didn't get at me, though. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? When but he hit you, how'd you react? I was just like, I was shocked. I was like, dude, you just did that? Where he hit you at? In your face? He didn't count me in the chin. Tried to knock you out. <laughs> I mean, if he hitting you there, he's trying to knock you out. Man, he must need to lift some weights or something, you know? What oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't getting nothing to you. No, no, ate, no, no. Ate that for dinner. Nah. You ate that? So, no you know, we, uh, we kind of squabbed a little bit. And this was in, like, the cafeteria at the time. And uh, my brother found out about it, you know. And he come. And my, this brother, he's, like, the quiet one. He, to yeah. this day, he's still the quiet. He's, like, a year older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you get that dude mad. Right, right. On site. He got like elephant strength. <laughs> <laughs> he always been that like that. So this was during the fight or he fought the dude again after you're already fighting? Nah, it was kinda like doing it. We was doing oh, okay. it. Just... How long did it take to break the fight up in the cafeteria? Man, you know cafeteria. Don't remember don't nobody really be in the cafeteria like that. You might mm. have one teacher or something, but yeah. you know it's usually, you know, a bunch of people. people. Yeah. Mm. So, you talking about it's like 30 some years ago. You right, know right, what I'm right. So, yeah. So, did, did you get in any type of trouble growing up? You say you didn't really fight or nothing like that? Yeah, my fair share, you know. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the? What the? <laughs> you know. That was one of them flashback moments. <laughs> is everything where you want to be like? Where you want to be like, man? You know. My question to you is: everything you're not under no like no investigation oh, or nothing. No, no, so, no, so no. Talk statute. Yeah, no, no. no statute limitations are over. No, statute no, limitations no, ran no. out. Nah, I ain't worried about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, like any young man, you know, I grew up in the you know in the inner city. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us know the Linden area. You mm-hmm. know, you guys not from here, but. You guys know Heard about the, it. The, you know, the Linden area. You know, I grew up right in the heart of it. And so, uh, man, we just we just got into stuff, man. And so uh stuff. There were <laughs> choices that, you know, we can make to try to get fast money, you know, stuff like that. And uh, you know, I chose that for a season of my life. And uh and we let's we in the backfield, man. We safe you know? back here. So you we talking about selling drugs. Yeah, okay. Selling selling drugs, man. You know, I wanna Keep it PG thirteen, you know. No, make they'll be all right. <laughs> you know, and so uh, yeah, there was a, a time in my life where you know I did try to go for the fast money. Uh, all I can say is, you know, thank God for deliverance. You know, for I, sure. I yeah. never. There was times that you know I came close to uh, to death, being in that in that life. You know, uh, not so much. Uh, you know. 
never really was on the police radar, you know, at least I thought. Right. Um, but a lot of times, man, you know, in that world, there's a lot of jealousy that goes on. Mm-hmm. You know, people think you got more than you got. You know, I ain't doing much. Right. You know, and uh, people don't like it. And so uh, that life in itself is a lot that goes with it. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the partying, you know, the hanging out, uh, being around those folks that's in that life. And so... You know, just a, a bunch of nothing, you know, when you look back at it. Right, right. You know, just a bunch of time wasted. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, without getting into too many sort of details, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was in that life for, for, for a bit. So you said, <clears throat> DC, I'm sorry if you got questions. No, you sure. said when you, you know, you did it for the fast money, but then you would go to parties and whatnot, and there would be, uh, you know, people who were in that life. Did you know going into it that you would this was just like a temporary thing, or did you, if you would have became like a kingpin, how'd you have continued to keep going? So you know when I look back at it, because you know me in this life now, right? And you know Absolutely. I'm a hustler. Yes, you for know sure. I, I work hard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so I always look back, and what I always say is I thank God that He didn't allow me because I knew. Was it in my mind that I wanted to be a kingpin? No. no. You know but, what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was just like, you know, you build, you build, you build. You know, one day you're going to end up there. You're going to end up dead or you end up locked up. You know, I didn't even really think about it like that. Like one right, day right. these streets is going to kill me. Right. You know, no, you, you just don't. You're living within that moment, you know, trying to get money. Uh, the girls, you know what I'm saying? And, uh everything that went with that life, you know? And so, uh, you know, that's that's where I was with it. But, yeah, I, I wasn't planning on uh, trying to be a kingpin, you know. Uh, I just thank God that I, I made it out because, you know, I, I hung with some guys that, that didn't, you know, yeah. whether it be, you know, uh, dead or, or, in, or in jail or did a lot of time, might have made it out. Uh, and some of those – you know, still stuck. Still know? stuck. Still mm-hmm. stuck. Dang. And, you know, like I said, except for the grace of God, you know, I look back and see some of these same cats that I was tight with. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, some of them are not here now. Right. Uh, had a long time friend, man, that passed away just two years ago. And he was just wild, but, you know, he was just, he was that, everybody got that one friend when they're growing up. That will always push the envelope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was that guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? It didn't matter. Right. He was just always wired. Um, you know, um, but that was my guy. You know, so. You got to go ahead. So you were involved in that four season of your life. Yeah. Right? Turned something that's uh, obviously negative, you know, in the grand scheme, could have wound up fatal. Right, but you turned it into something that's extremely positive in what you do now. Was there an event or any incident that happened that made you say, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get right with this. I gotta clean it up and and go straight." So let me, you know, let me double back a little bit, okay? Because um, I've had, man, like I said, I'm, I'm 50 years old. I just turned 50 in October. Man, look good. Uh, I was just say, yeah, man, right. man, I ain't know. Thank you. I ain't know that either. And so, um, shout out to Melanin. That's real. <laughs> shout out to Melanin. Um, DJ Mel. But a story that I, you know, share with you um, about eighteen. You know, when I was eighteen years old, I just graduated from high school and uh, went straight into barber barber school. Um, Living my dream, you know, and situation arose at barber school and they had put me out, you know, over something that didn't have to do with me, really. You know, they were kind of, they were, they, it was a discrepancy with my hours and it turned into an argument, you know, um, just as serious I am about, uh, just as serious I am about cutting now is how it was then. I knew for, you know, years that I always wanted to do this. And so, uh. Anyway, I get kicked out. I'm just hanging out. And so uh, it was crazy because my dad at the time, uh, 
and it was right down the street from my house. He was like, you know, I don't like you hanging out on that corner. You know, Dad, rah, rah, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, Dad, we ain't doing nothing. We just hanging out. And um, young lady I was dating at the time, uh, she was just like, uh, you know, you need to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Hanging out there. And I'm like, oh, we just, you know, we chilling, blah, blah, blah. You know, cut to the chase, you know, maybe two or three days later, you know, altercation happened. I ended up getting shot. Um and uh, got shot in the chest. And uh, tell us about that altercation. Like, how'd that go down? If you remember? So, the guy that I was telling you about, that one guy that everybody uh, uh, pushed yeah. the envelope. Yeah. So, uh, there was a situation um, maybe probably about a week prior, a week prior to that, um, that he got into it with this guy. Mm-hmm. And um, we didn't think nothing about it. And, uh, Come to find out, me, him, me, my guy, and my my baby brother, we left somewhere, went to a little party or something. But that guy had came back that night and seen a couple of my other dudes that was hanging out with us on his porch and pulled that gun on on them. So we heard about it the next day, and we was just like, oh, man, we just kind of really blew it off. Like, we'll deal with that when we, you know, I didn't even know who the dude was. You right. know, and so anyway, that's crazy. Um, but probably about a week later, uh, it's broad daylight. It's probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. We see the guy walking down the street, and he, he got somebody with him or whatever. And uh, my, he stopped and called my dude out. And uh, I'm not gonna get my dude's name either because yeah, rest, yeah, 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 rest, yeah. rest in peace. You know. Um, but he called his called his name and said, "Hey man, why you try to jump me that day?" And I'm looking at my boy like, "Man, who is this?" Right, because you, know? you don't know him. Right. right. So I'm like, I jumped down off the porch like we about to scrap. Man, this dude unzipped this bag. Man, pulled this big old revolver out. And so, you know, so now I'm thinking, we we're kind of like on the side of this side of his house, and. uh I'm thinking well, if I run this way, I'm thinking the process and all this, he's going to shoot me in my back, you know. Um, and the other guy with me pulled a gun out of his pocket. And uh, so I go to run the other way. I remember hearing one shot. And uh, we running, we running. And my buddy stayed in a double. I never knew who lived in the house uh, right next to him. I never saw nobody there. But... We ended up running in front of his house and running in between. But by the time we got to the back of the house, the guys that were shooting at us was right there. But if it wasn't for those people that lived in that house and came outside to see what was going on, they would have met us right there and possibly could have shot us dead. Dang. And so wow. by this time, we turn around and start running in the back. But now I feel this. I never felt it when I got hit. Wow. But I felt the blood running down my chest by this point because my adrenaline is so, right. you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so I ended up running back, running across the front of this old barbershop and into this other building, which I didn't know at the time was a church. Mm-hmm. And so they ended up calling the ambulance for me. And uh, there was a lady that was in there that was praying for me at the time. And, uh, you know, then I went on to the hospital. I was in there for about four days. But where the bullet hit me, um, pretty much right there, you know, if it had went straight through me, it would have hit me in my heart. And so, uh, and it was nothing short of a miracle, Mm -hmm. period, because even the doctors, you know, they were dumbfounded. I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to like go into surgery, like in the operation room. I was there for four days. When I first got there, you know, they x-rayed me, made sure I didn't have, you know, any internal bleeding and stuff like that, any nothing, no major arteries. The day that I got ready to get out, they numbed my chest in my room and made a decision, took the, the bullet out and stitched me back up. Wow. And so, wow. Uh, you know, so you would think after an event like that, right? you know, because you asked me, was there something that, yeah. you know, see, that happened even before I got involved in the streets like that. Oh, I wasn't ooh, even, wow. I wasn't even doing nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I. Mind you, I just got put out of barber school, you know, and so 
And that's the thing, you know, that was always my goal. And when that was taken away, Got you it. know, I started just moving in different directions. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, you know, what the Bible say, without a plan, the people perish. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that was my plan, you know. And once, like I said, that wasn't anymore, I was just out there. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, but yeah, man. And so, anyway... I later go on to get, like I said, involved in, you know, the other things, trying to make the, you know, the fast money or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was there was some incidents along the way, man, where, you know, I had some brushes, you know, with, with death during that, you know. Um, but again, you know, I always brought it back to, you know, God had his, he had his hand on me, man, you know, regardless. Um, I was raised in the church, you know. Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. knew... You know, I knew right from wrong, um, you know, but God just didn't let me go. And back to what I was saying, you know, I was trying to, you know, get that money. And, and I, I mean, I got a couple of dollars here and there, you know, like I said. Uh, but it was nothing I can look back and say, was it worth putting myself at risk based on the things that could have happened to me mm -hmm. in the process, you know, uh, there was a time where, you know, I thought that, you know, I was going to have to do something to somebody. And it's, it's, it scared me, you know, because mm -hmm. I never, I, I just never thought that way, right. you know right. what I'm saying? Right. But I, I thought somebody was going to, you know, make an attempt on me and, and I was just ready. And I, I, I said to myself, you know, and my son is 21 years old. And so uh, at that time he was about two. Okay. And so you remember... Uh, the little chains used to make with the, you know, they scan the pictures on them and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I had that little chain on my son and, and I was thinking like, man, this is really about to go down like this. And so I'm looking at my son and um, I was like, man, this is really about to go down. I was like, either I'm going to kill this dude and go to jail or they're going to kill me. And all I could think about is like my family going to be like, what was he even? Because I wasn't even in town. I was out of town. And nobody um, even knew it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was handling business mm -hmm. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it almost caught me. You know what I'm saying? And so, but even then, like I said, you know, God was looking out because the guy that broke it up, that squashed it, was family of the dude that had beef with me. And he just got out for murder. Ah. Uh, wow. So. Like, this know, don't even, it ain't worth it. You right. know. The signs so, are there. Um, but yeah, man, you know, that's just, we can sit here and go for a while. I, yeah. I just, you know, God has been good to me, man, when I was just out of my mind. You know what I'm saying? Just going the wrong way. And so, uh, you know, he gave me an opportunity, um, you know, because after I got kicked out, man, it was a long time before I made it back mm -hmm. and was able to, you know, go back to school. You know, um, time moved on. Uh, had more responsibilities, um, and it was 15 years before I went back to barber school. So how many years consecutively have you been doing this? Since 04. Since 04. Yeah. Wow. 20 years. Yeah. 20 years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was easy math for me. <laughs> 2024. <Man. laughs> um, you said something when you had uh, got shot. Mm -hmm. You said you ran past a barber shop mm -hmm. and into... A church, mm -hmm. profound. Because, what's the name of your uh, barber shop up north? Lighthouse. Lighthouse. What's the significance behind that? Safety. Safety. But I met you with even one better. You know, I told you I was raised in the church. Yeah. Man, we lived in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, every time the doors open. But when I got eighteen, you know, I'd be you start smelling yourself. You know, what I'm saying you're feeling grown. You know, all them days we said we got tired of going. I used to church. shower. I, I turned look. I turned eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> I turned eighteen. I'm like, man, I ain't going to church no more. Mm -hmm. The very place that I was running from, mm -hmm. I ended up running to. Yep. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, that's that's a word right yeah. there, man. And so, uh, but yeah, man, you know what you see today, and I, man, I'm a walking miracle. When I tell people. And like I said, that's not even half of it. Right. 
you know, some things, you know, I can slide in, man, I had a heart attack when I was 41. And I'm going to give you a short version. Uh, anytime anybody have any kind of issue with their heart, there's always some kind of damage. You mm -hmm. can see it. I had a tear in one of my arteries and, um, it's called spontaneous coronary artery dissection. I was at home with my family one day, and it was a snow day. And uh, um, I just, I got up, you know, I, I went downstairs for something, and I felt like, you know how you eat something, you don't chew it all the way up, and mm -hmm. you swallow it, and you feel like you just got stuck? Yeah. But I hadn't, eat, I hadn't eaten anything. And so I, uh, I grabbed me a bottle of water, Chugged on out like that ain't good then. Didn't help. Mm -hmm. You know, when told my wife, I said, you know, babe, I'm having uh, having chest pains. You know, what I'm and she was like, you need to go to the doctor. I said, no, nah, I think I need to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we get up, we ride down. We didn't even go call the uh, ambulance. But as I'm on my way down there, I'm going like this. I'm squeezing, squeezing my hands, squeezing my hands. I'm losing uh, feeling. Feeling in my hand, circulation. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway, by the time I get there, you know, I stumble out of the truck and, you know, there's a wheelchair at the uh, entrance of the emergency room. She rolled me back to the desk and uh, she's uh, trying to explain to them what's going on. And when she's saying that, she said, my eyes just rolled back in the back of my head. Uh -huh. I just passed out. And uh, next thing I do, I wake up, I'm on the table. They put me on the table. And... Um, so the doctors asked me, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, they ran a couple of tests and uh, they ended up, uh, after they ran the blood test, you know, check enzymes and all that stuff. And uh, they said they need to do a heart calf, you know, uh, where you go up and run the thing up and see what's going on. So right. the doctor's saying like, well, if you got a blockage, we're going to put a stent in there. Uh, if you've got more than one, you know, we got to open you up, mm -hmm. cut you up. And so uh, I was like, okay. And so the next morning anyway, I go and do the heart cath. And um, you're not completely out when they're doing it, so you can hear them talking. And all I heard was the doc say no stent, no surgery. And so, uh, you know, even six months after the, the incident, you know, I went and got another ultrasound. It was like it never even happened. You know what mm -hmm. they told me? The doctor said it, it repaired itself. Now, I had a hole in my artery, artery yeah. where blood was flowing out. Mm -hmm. And he said it repaired itself. Wow. Wow. Miracle. Walking miracle. And so <sighs> one of my clients, uh, she's a doctor. Uh, I was cutting her son's, her son and her husband for a while. She had saw me because after that incident, you know, I'm hitting the gym. I'm trying to get in shape now, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, she's like, you're looking, you're looking good. Looking. And I told her what happened. And for what, <laughs> Come on. what I had, you know, she was like, uh, I said, it's more common in women. And she said, yeah, it's usually fatal too. Wow. You know, and so uh, what I said I to say, man, you know, to never even have any sign that anything ever happened. When they scanned me, there was nothing. nothing. No stent, no surgery. Nothing. Repair yourself. And so when I say, man, God has been with me, you know, he's been with me, man. You know, and so that's why I do what I do every day the way I do it, you know, to try to represent him the best way I can, mm -hmm. you know, with the time that I have left, uh, mm -hmm. with the time that he's given me, that I know that he's given me, that could have been taken on multiple times. 100%. You does anything from your past ever come up now in your future? As far as to in a negative way? Yeah, like the stuff you used to do. Nah, man, you know why? Because that stuff is so far behind me now. Um every now you you might you might run into somebody um like, hey man, you remember when that right. you know, you always got somebody that always point backwards mm -hmm. and, and they don't they might not even mean uh 
you any harm, but they just haven't matured out of that space Still yet. In that, yeah. Right. Still in that right. fine space, saying. yeah. And, and, I, and I'm okay with that, but nah, man, I don't even, you know, all of us regret some things from the past, mm -hmm. but I don't live in regret. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? I can I can tell my story, and I have told my story. I haven't really told it on a you know a, a, a cast or anything right, like right. that before. Uh, but many times with some of the younger brothers in the chair, yes. you know that, yeah. that yes. were mentorship that were where I've been. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and a lot of times, you know, when I do tell my story, people are like, man, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, you just don't look like you've been through some of the things you know that you've been through but yeah you know mm -hmm. you mentioned the lighthouse the significance of it is safety mm -hmm. right and obviously you have a barbershop here um i was scrolling on instagram just mm -hmm. going through the explore page uh honestly like maybe like two weeks ago and there was someone that had an issue with a barber and he walked right into his establishment at open fire Ugh. Just start shooting at him. I don't know if you know what what the beef was. I don't know what it was, but it's just you know for someone to do that in broad daylight too, you know, at any given time, something like that can happen. Not saying that you have any quarrel with anybody out there now, but your place is open to the public with your clients and everything. Is that something that you ever worry about? I would say I've definitely been concerned with it before um, because I do know some people that you know, have had their barbershop robbed mm -hmm. uh, at gunpoint. Um, you know, I think people th look at it, it's a cash business, which right. a lot of times people are doing digital <laughs> yeah, business yeah. more than ever before now. But right. uh, yes, but at the lighthouse, the whole time I've been there, um, I think it's only been one time where I felt like somebody was kind of like casing the spot. And so, uh, you know, but nothing ever, nothing ever came. They came in asking questions, but they were doing too much looking around. Mm -hmm. you, know? you can feel it, right? Yeah, you can you just can see me acting with, yeah. And, you know, in, in, a, in a situation like that, you know, uh, I don't, I don't live my life in fear. Uh, sure, we know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, based on, like I said, what, what I've, what I've been through, I just look at it like, if I if I really do leave here, it's time for me to leave here. Yeah. Based off the things that I, right. you know, come through to stay here, you know, um, you know. But yeah, I, I've I've never had any uh, issues. Nobody come at me personally, like threaten me within a barbershop. Uh, I've never I've never had that. That's so why you got five star ratings everywhere. That's, why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why JC is that G U Y that guy. That, that's the uh, robo accounts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. AI has helped JC the barber reach five stars. <laughs> but no, yeah, that's that's deep stuff, bro. And I mean, I've uh, I've known a lot of it. I'm glad they get to hear, it. I'm yeah, glad we'll be able to show yeah. the people. Um, you're you're a great dude, man. I I know sometimes I come in here and you gave me a word the last time I was in here, bro, because I had a lot on my mind and uh, I felt safe. I felt like I was already in the backfield. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was talking to you and, and you cut my hair and the clippers just stopped. And he circled around and he's like, is it worth it? <laughs> and I'm like, man, you right. Just make sure you don't forget my two lines. You know what I mean? I'm not, like, for right. real. Get back and, to the cut, though. Like, get back to the cut. Appreciate but, it, but get back. I mean, it was more said, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, that's why, I, I like, bro, I got to get you on a cast, bro, because the story that you told me and you willing to share it with people, like I said, the statue of limitations is gone. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you, you ain't into nothing right now. You are a great mentor. I told you, I look I look, at, I look up to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially when I'm sitting in the chair, I'm like, this opening your Flip your lip, you know, flip my lip. Let me tell you about this cat, man. One time I'm sitting there, you know, you you drop your lip, next thing I feel like, hey, JC, hey, what is you doing? Wait, man? But, but why did I do that? Wait, it was a joke. It was a joke. You know what I mean? What? Come, <laughs> I think somebody dared you to do it. Flip the lip. Flip the lip, bro. Yeah. 
something that was going on on Instagram, bro. And he, you know, we we was we we had a tight relationship. We cool. And I looked at him like, I had to look at him like, bro, hold on now, JC. What what was that, bro? And he just sitting there cracking up. Now, had he kept a serious face, I think we would have had some furniture moving. You know. <laughs> but uh, but nah, JC always been solid, man. And I definitely appreciate you, man. Love you like a brother. Um, Likewise, you know we'll. Always be tight, and like you said, I, I got one more question. You said if it's your time to go, and somebody came into your shop, mm. and it's your time to go, are you going out just like I right, you got, or are you fighting? What? I right, say less. Yeah. <laughs> a fighter, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm right, always no. gonna fight to live. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, but if for some reason, you know, I don't make it, mm -hmm. God has ordained it. For sure. I know where I will open my eyes up. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's all that matters. You know. Uh, but he's left me here for my family, for mm -hmm. my kids, for my grandkids, for my beautiful, wonderful wife that always got my back. No, oh, she, no. Family, yes, what he do. We know what he's doing right she, now. Shout the wifey. Shout the wifey. Look, look at this part right here, baby. This is my favorite look, look, look. part. <laughs> right. JC, so we always do one thing. DC, you got to finish the gym? I do. Okay, all right. So yeah, we're gonna go let we're gonna let you do your sure. finished gym, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna let him do one too, as we know he always got words of wisdom. Oh yeah. For so sure. let DC give his finishing gym. We want you to give us one too, like you always, just like him getting out of the chair or getting out of the chair. But go ahead. Yeah. DC, so this uh, this episode and speaking with JC has definitely confirmed the message that I wanna I wanna share. You know, a few things have happened for me as of late, and I couldn't be any more grateful for what has come but i also have to thank the company that i keep yes because it definitely has a reason as to why it's going the way it's going like my friend my best friend my brother a train my, my blood brother darnell my mom my dad the village you know thanks to them for keeping me motivated and keeping me disciplined in certain things because you can get distracted at any given time but because of the people that are around me a lot of things a lot of great things have come in the last month or so, so forever. And, you know, I just want to thank y'all for what you guys are doing and and, uh, and the blessings to come. That also made me to remind everyone who's listening and who's watching these three things I always tell the kids that I train or anyone that's asking for advice. Whatever your journey is, whatever game you're playing in, whatever direction you want to go, stay consistent, stay hungry, but most importantly, stay humble. If you can hone in on all three of those facets, you will watch your life, your direction, your game, your skill take flight. Oh, Ooh, take oh, flight. see what I did there? Consistency, stay humble, and stay hungry. And stay hungry. My dog. That's it. Stomach growling. Absolutely. <laughs> I like that. Mine is too, for real. But no, on the real, that's, that's good. That was a good one, DC, for real. Take flight. I like that. You might want to trademark that. Oh, speaking of that, put that back on real quick. Now that you said that, the sun is out. It's getting warm. To all the kids that I've been training, the quarterbacks that we've been working, that I've been working, ready. listen, listen, listen. We taking it up a notch this spring. So make sure you're ready. The Flight 17 way. Hey, yeah, hey. Uh, Put the camera on me. Hey, listen, I'm I'm affiliated. Yes, sir. I'm affiliated with the game. <laughs> so listen, if you if you're a running back and you quarterbacks, you bring your running backs, you bring your receivers, and we will get them, you know, right for sure. For sure. But anyways, back to you know normal operation. JC, go ahead and get us with a with a finishing gym. I know we put you on the spot, but you know, for a guy, a wise man well, like I'm, you. I'm a I'm a pull one. Yeah. I'm a, a wise man. Um this was my former pastor, and one that he would always say. Good, better, best. Yeah. Never let it rest. Mm -hmm. Your good is better, and your better is best. Ooh, that's it. <laughs> I got one more, one more time. One more time. Good, better, best. Good, better, best. Never let it rest. Never let it rest. To your good is better. To your good is better. And your better is best. And your better is best. That's, that's My dog. Real. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You, you have you ever played football? Like like organized? Yeah. What position did you play? Running back. 
You play? Let's go. Yeah, shout to y'all. Shout to y'all running back. You got to protect this clown with an old line. Don't know what they do. <laughs> I pick him up. Yeah. But that being said, we always end with the captain breaking us out of this huddle from the backfield. Yes, sir. So, DC, that being said, get us out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Set. Why did he? Why did he set up? <laughs> Offside? <laughs>